Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gamma Trap, one word, and today we are going to be going over glow and glow effects in Photoshop. So we're going to be talking about what glow is, how to make it, and what's good ways for it to be used. Now, glow, uh, if you've noticed, almost all of my pieces have some elements in it that have glow effects. I'll be the first to admit that it's, it's kind of addicting and it's easy to go crazy because it'll wash out a lot of the work that you've already kind of previously made, some of, some of the detail. So if you go crazy with it, it might take away from the value of your piece, which you don't want. But if you're subtle, if you're gentle, it will definitely add to the overall value of your pieces. Uh, full disclosure, I've, um, I've already made this video. I mean, like, I haven't actually like sat down and like, yeah, here we go. Um, I kind of did. I was on stream once and I made it kind of a half-assed tutorial. It wasn't as comprehensive and it just kind of covered over the sort of the basics. But uh, what I meant to say is I've already recorded this, this video, but one of the files was corrupted and it just threw off the entire thing. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. I didn't spend too much time in it just yet. I mean, it's not a very long tutorial, hopefully. So it should be fine. Before we begin, I really appreciate it if you left a like on this video. If you find any of this information helpful, useful, unexpected, or expect, even if you don't like the video, I'd kind of like it if you tossed a like. I mean, if I'm being, if I'm being real, I stream on Twitch. You can find the link below. I do artwork there, and I can't make tutorial videos for everything that I like to offer. I will hopefully at some point get around to making all of those videos. But until then, if you have any specific questions, it's best to just find me on Twitch and hang out and ask there in chat and I'll, uh, I'll answer them and I'll even demonstrate for you live on Twitch. Anyway, back to the, uh, the topic at hand. All right, so if we're looking here, we see we've got one of my more, uh, more popular pieces, my Gambit Snake, I call it Gamboy. And all it really is, is just the snake wrapped around the Gambit coin. And this is from Destiny 2. If you haven't played that game, then you probably don't really know what I'm talking about, but it's still a cool piece. Now, if you look at the detail, like the scales here are just kind of like just some gentle line work. It's really nothing crazy, but it looks cool because of a couple of factors. One, I've got a nice uh, depth of field, you know, area of focus on the coin and the, and the face of the snake and stuff. So that's that kind of already adds a little bit of value. And second, the lighting. It's pretty subtle throughout most of this, but it really draws attention right here. And that's because I've got a nice subtle glow effect on this coin here and just a little bit on the head and just a bit on the scales there. It's it's just a little bit of lighting control, but the glow is immediately like the brightest point in this entire piece. And it's not crazy, but right here on the edge of the coin, there are actual white pixels. Now white pixels are fine as long as you know the best way to use them. When I say that on like a piece like this, white pixels and black pixels, pure white and pure black are almost kind of dead pixels. Like they have no real use so you got to be careful how you use them because they will put that that is the barriers say that's the darkest point that's the lightest point try to try to avoid pure black and pure white but it is fine for some spots especially inside this glow here so that's the gambit snake next is tanix this is another character from destiny 2 i'm not sure if you noticed yet but there's kind of a theme here i draw a lot of sci-fi and video game characters in fact all these pieces i'm going to show you are from destiny 2 um, but you can you can tell there's a lot of obvious glow here. There's uh, some overglow on this guy's fur right there, and there's some glow to uh, accent the some of the lighter points in this guy's armor. And there's the really obvious glow of around the eyes. And I'm gonna get into uh, sort of like the best ways to use glow uh, to handle this guy. But I'm just kind of showing you a couple of the obvious ones. And to give you sort of an idea of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, next one is Ada One. She's another character from Destiny. Go figure. Crazy. I know. She's an Exo who apparently has some kind of like space magical powers to augment weapons. It's pretty cool. The glow here, I probably don't have to say anything about it. <laughs> uh, this one might be, this one's close. This one's, this one's a close one to being one that's a little too much glow. But as long as it's not overpowering a lot of the detail that you've previously made, you're fine in my opinion. It is a little much though on this one, I think, yeah. But there's a glow around your eye. And here's a wonderful use of atmospheric glow because there's a bit of background glow. And you, some might not consider this glow, but the background here, the kind of purpley lavender violet part that goes subtly into the darker violet in the background, 
this light spot is technically a form of glow. It didn't really look very glowy, but I'll, I'll, I'll get into that a bit later. And there's obviously glow around these magical twists and, and spiral things. And, and here is the really interesting part of the glow on Ada. You'll notice that you can tell just by looking that there's a glow on the palm of her hand uh, opposite from where you're seeing. So you, so you see there's a, there's obscured glow behind these fingers. So you can, there's, there's a light source on her palm that's on the other side of, of where you can see. And over here, you can see the glow is bleeding over this palm, which means that the glow is in front of her hand now, but it's behind this part of the gun. So this gun is very clear, and this palm here, this hand is very light. It's been hit by the glow pretty hard. So we'll get into a bit of that later also. And next one, you've probably seen it if you've seen my metal tutorial, because we go over how to make this kind of stuff in that video. And that video is, I, I should probably remember to put that video in the description link below. Hopefully I do. If, if I don't, just go to my channel and look in the tutorial section, you'll find it. It's really fast. It's one of my best ones. But the glow here is, is honestly all over this place. But <laughs> I used uh, glow on accents to show the highlights of the armor here. And obviously there's the fire gun situation. And I put some glow around the moon and a little really subtle glow in the background and some glow on this guy's kind of cape situation. The glow effect is essentially made to help tell the story of what's going on inside your piece. All that out of the way, let's get into some of the more basic types of, of glow. And I've already, like I said, I've already made this video. So I've got something here to show you all in a second <laughs> that I made live, you know, sort of on my previous video, but I'll just kind of go over it after we go through this stuff. So first things first, to make a glow, we're gonna go over the basic basics, the base, the most basic thing ever. So it's pretty much just involving these two brushes. There's a hard round pressure size and soft round pressure opacity. These are basic brushes that come with every Photoshop file. So we're gonna start with the hard one first. And we're gonna make three different types of light sources. We're going to use white. And I know I said this earlier, but this is just for demonstration. White is the lightest value you can add to a piece, which is kind of why we don't wanna do it too much. But in this demonstration, we're gonna use that because it's really, really bright. You can only really do glow effects with bright colors or bright values. So here's that, that, and so here's some basic forms of light source. I'm gonna actually make this a little bigger. There we go. Okay, here's the most basic kind of forms of light sources. We've got the point light, which is just a dot of light, like a star or a light bulb. And they've got a slashing light, so we can think like a bullet that's been caught in midair just speeding by. It's uh, It acts as sort of like a light source on its own, so it's just this, this, this slash of light, right? And then there's this partially concealed light. You can still see some of the light source inside, you know, behind this structure, but obviously you can't see the whole thing. So how do we go about doing light source for these things? Let's start with the pin light, or point light, right here. I'm gonna go back to the white, and we're gonna go to our soft pressure. Now I made a new layer for these. So the first layer is just the light sources and the second layer is going to be the glow. And I'll show you kind of why in a second. So first we just make our soft brush. And after I'm done with these, you can skip the video if you want to, because this is just the most key knowledge about glow right here, okay? All you have to do is take your soft brush, make it kind of big, right? And then you're going to go over gently the light source like that. And the same works for the slash light, just kind of follow it gently. And around the middle, you're gonna want the most, turn the shape down yourself. You're gonna want the most um, glow. Doesn't have to be, sometimes it can be the edge. If, if the, the lightest point is on the edge, like if it is following a bullet, sometimes it's cool to have the tip of the bullet be the brightest point, but if not, I miss mean, is perfectly fine. And then our partially concealed. Now, the thing about the partially concealed is if you imagine holding a flashlight and then you move your hand in front of it uh, you, and you cover the light from the flashlight, you won't see most, if not all, of the light source, but you will see the light source bleeding around the edges of your hand. So there's still fuzz or there's still glow. So for partially concealed, Let's drop the opacity in the flip. We're gonna be a little more subtle. Just add a little extra like that. 
So light still, even if it's kind of covered, still constantly emits its, its light, its glow, its diffusion. So even if you partially conceal it, you'll still have some glow effects right here. If you go all around, then it kind of implies that there is no obstruction to the light source. If you go all over, it, it's, it doesn't say to the viewer that the glow is being obstructed. You can have glow through the area, but you don't want it all around. You want it pretty much focused right there where the viewer can see the light source, whatever they can see. And sometimes the light source is completely covered. And when that happens, then we can use the glow as a storytelling element. So by that, I mean, say we give it a little rim light here. So the light source is back here, right behind the structure. And we're gonna give it a little bit of rim light, just kind of gently applying a bit of light. And this is just gonna be a really, really light point. So say the light's over here, right? And this rim light is when the light's behind the subject and it's wrapping around. And that's just the lightest point because it's the closest point to the light source for the object. And now I'm going to give it a little bit of glow right there around the rim light. So a little bit of diffused brush, a little soft brush around that. So the, the light source is back here somewhere but the light is still wrapping around, still going, you know, still hitting the object and then kind of bouncing around it. Sort of like a rock inside a river. It kind of still kind of goes around it, but it's not going to be completely around. So that means you can't still see like all the light. It is still being obstructed. There is still a shadow in play and that shadow is pretty much covering your eyes, but you can still see the edge of the light. So think of like when someone's taking a picture outside uh, in the sun, but the sun's behind them and you're facing them with the camera, you can see like their hair gets this cool kind of like halo effect. It's the, it's the rim light, it's pretty cool. Now let's look at what I did um, the first time I did this video. So we've got a gray background and we've got some light sources in here, but let's imagine it's pitch black. So now it's, there's, there's nothing, it's just a dark canvas. It's pitch black, no light sources. So this is pretty much what I ended up with. So let's get into what happened here. So first things first is I made some kind of clouds. All right, I'll get into how to make clouds in the cloud tutorial that's coming up, but until then, I just kind of made some clouds. And I gave it this edge light, this rim light here, because we can't really see the light source in this particular piece. And this just, just kind of let, this, let the piece tell you the story of where the light source is and kind of help the light source tell you the story of what's going on, essentially. So we've got the rim light on the top of these kind of smoky clouds here. And I gave it that glow. Remember how we, how we had the rim light glow right there on the edge of this kind of concealed area. And next we added some stars. Now these are act like sort of like point lights like we talked about, like with the, uh, like the dot here. So the stars are just simple white dots. I really just honestly just made some dots, right? Nothing crazy. But then their own separate layer, I made the glow for the brightest dots. Now, I like to keep the main source of light and the glow on separate layers, specifically, so that I can control how much glow there is or how much diffusion there is of the light, depending on how far away the thing, if I couldn't do it while I'm painting. And it just gives me a little extra control. Let's take this 100% glow, drop it down to maybe about 40-ish, and it's a little more subtle now. You see. Next, we talk about how color dodge and linear dodge can add a certain level of glow. I don't know if you uh, have seen Ross Draws, but it's another artist here on YouTube and elsewise. He used to work for Disney. It was pretty cool. But his favorite thing in the world is color dodge. And I don't blame him. It's pretty cool. It adds a little extra juice to the piece. But it, again, like everything, it's easy to go overboard with that. But it's pretty cool because it adds a certain level of like color glow to a piece. So color dodge is kind of a strange animal. So I'd suggest you look up tutorials on like what all it does. Uh, but linear dodge adds a more pure form of the color. Linear dodge doesn't really care too much what colors it's landing on, uh, unlike color dodge here, because I, I painted just this kind of teal over teal again, and it turned out green in the background because of the color that it was landing on. Uh, but linear dodge, I just kind of painted purple on it, and all it does is it looks for the values that it's laying on, laying down on. And it's not gonna try and mesh with the colors, it's gonna keep its color, but it's just gonna lay down in an interesting kind of bright sort of way. So now let's look at some of these previous pieces with a more uh, critical eye and kind of spot all the glow effects. So Shin, it's pretty simple uh, <laughs> to find this guy's glow effects. It's not like he's hiding it very well. 
right? So first we've got sort of a yellow orange glow on these pieces of metal. The ones that are facing us and the fire gun here get the the warm glows, you know? It's essentially just white, but I put a red to orange color dodge and kind of swipe down over those. Now these pieces of his armor are facing sort of the moon and the atmosphere. So these get more of like a blue glow. And there's a bit of a subtle glow in the background. There's the yellow glow over the gun because it's on fire. There's a yellow glow here because it's catching the light from the gun. And there's a bit of concealed, bit of concealed glow on this guy's hand right here. And it's super subtle. Like again, you don't want to go too hard. Otherwise you'll wash out a lot of detail that you might've spent a lot of time on. And we kind of already went over Ada, so we don't really have to worry too much about her. Uh, but notice how I use the glow to tell the story of what's going on in this piece. And it adds to the value as opposed to erasing detail or takes away from the value. All right, now Tanix. Tanix is an interesting one. We notice Tanix has a lot of highlights. See these pure white lines here? That's because there's like sharp edges and corners to his armor and pieces of his mask and such. So here's something to try out. If you'll notice also, we've got our rim light on this guy's fur and we've got some, some highlights around there to show that light's kind of bouncing around it. But the interesting thing about Tanix is he has light sources all around him because it looks like he's kind of standing in a fire almost. So something fun to do with light like this, just hard, just hard, you know, nicks and cuts and armor and stuff where there's sharp metal and materials involved. So there's really a lot of just pure white lines everywhere. Something fun to do. And this is gonna be kind of subjective to whatever you're up to, but it's fun to add a little extra glow, subtle glow, I should always say, to these highlights. So we're gonna get a soft brush. It's gonna be pressure sensitive. And we just drop the flow and opacity down a bit to make it a little more subtle. And we're just gonna kind of go over these spots in his armor, right where the right where the nicks and cuts are. And we're gonna control the glow with the size of the brush. Right, small brush means it's a more precise area where you're painting. And then the big brush is when you want to just have a nice kind of easy overall glow. So you follow the highlighted areas. Then you apply sort of the overall glow. You can do this to several different places in the piece if you want. There we go. We're just kind of messing around, all right? <laughs> this is just for fun. Now, this honestly, I wouldn't go this far if I wasn't just doing a fun little tutorial thing <laughs> because it kind of it sort of does start taking away from the value of the piece simply because, I mean, it still can be totally awesome. It looks more juicy, but the reason I say it sort of starts taking away from the value is because your eyes are now drawn to more lighter parts in the armor. So it takes away from some of the other spots that probably don't got much glow. So let's experiment here. Let's take a look and see what we did. So you'll notice the parts with the, the highlighted, you know, cuts in the armor, the really reflective ones. Now have a little extra shine to them. And because these glow, this glow layer is on its own separate layer, we can adjust how much glow it gets. So it can be more subtle if we want. I'm gonna use Tanix here as another example of what I was talking about earlier. Cause we kind of did get, we didn't really get a chance to go over color dodge and linear dodge in a really useful way, I don't think. So let's just grab, how about orange and gold? Let me just try pure red, okay. So we're gonna do color dodge real quick. Color dodge is a wonderful, super strong and easy, again, to mess up uh, brush or, or blending mode, I should say. Now, again, if we look down here, the blending mode that we're looking for is just color dodge. So we're gonna click this drop down menu above our layers and we've got color dodge right in here. And it's right above linear dodge, I might add. We're gonna go over linear dodge in a second. So color dodge first, and we're just gonna do red. And let me show you this, all right? Turn flow and opacity all the way up. This is what color dodge does. A really bright, doesn't really care what's going on. <laughs> Just adds crazy, crazy stuff constantly. So if we drop the flow and opacity down, we're gonna be a little more subtle about it if we're being, if we're gonna be honest about it, all right? Now we're just gonna add 
some cool glow to some of the flashier bits. Let's increase the opacity a bit more. There we go. Now it's now it's really kicking in. Let's have a bounce light, a little stronger bounce light on this guy's on the bottom part of his little dome head thing. Now let's just do this arm real quick. Just super quick. There, see. Now again, it's easy to go crazy with the glow. Try to avoid that. I'm just trying to give you the tools that can help you make really cool pieces. I don't want to be responsible for you like, oh man, I put too much glow on there. Oh, why did I listen to Gamma? Jeez. Oh man, he puts glows on, he puts glow on everything. I wanted to try that. It takes practice, all right? Easy to go crazy. So now we got our color dodge. Let's turn that off. And now let's do a linear dodge. And you're gonna see a difference here. We got the same color brush. And it's not gonna be too much different, but you will see there's a bit difference. Like it doesn't change much color, it just adds it to the value. If we go to something like this green here and add it, you'll notice this is really green, right? But if we go to the color dodge, you kind of see what's going on here? So it's it's different. And then they're they're different in sometimes cool ways. Just try to use both of them to sort of get what you need out of the piece. If one doesn't work, try the other one if you are so inclined to make sure that you have a glowing, colorful effect. And you don't want to go crazy again. Try to make sure it's subtle. Drop the flow and opacity down to 30 or 40. Take it easy, <laughs> all right? Just, just be nice, be good to it, okay? You've, you've done a lot of work on that piece, most likely, and I don't want, you, I don't want it to suffer. And then the gambit here. It's probably obvious what's going on here now. I just had a little glow right there. I think this one was a color dodge and it was super subtle. I just put a glow around the edge of this coin here, right below the snake head right there, and just a smidge. I think this one was linear dodge up here on top of the head. And I just kind of dragged it across the coin just for a little bit of effect. It's super subtle. Uh, the drag is, I mean, the shine is pretty shiny, but like the drag is it's pretty subtle. Aside from that, that's pretty much it. So I really hope you all found this video helpful. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this one out without it being corrupted. I really hope it works. Uh, I don't want to go over this again again, but I will if I have to because you guys all voted on Twitter and YouTube and I don't want to disappoint you. And I've been trying to get this glow tutorial out for too long. And now I finally have like three days to myself to start making tutorials or relax or play or whatever I go with. But you'll probably see me a lot on Twitch. Uh, leave a like on the video if you did find it useful or if you found me entertaining or just kind of funny to watch. Be sure to subscribe if you're interested in more tips, tricks, tutorials, uh, speed paints, and just artsy stuff in general. And uh, follow me on Twitch, and I'll see you there. Peace, guys.